Hello, you are watching the Hustle and Know Entrepreneurial Experience. We are an entrepreneurship book club moving into the podcast world. My name is Julie. I'm your host today. Um, entrepreneur is a passion for knowledge. And joining us, we have Joseph Warren, co owner of Financial Planning HQ, Sean Townley, he's our producer, um, speaker, consultant, and geek. And Joining us today is very special guest, Ramiro Ponton. Hello. <laughs> Ramiro is the son of a South American mainlander and Caribbean islander who grew up mostly in a cardboard box. He enjoys kickboxing, reading books, dancing, and cooking. He also has an insatiable desire to refine and grind at his purpose and live out his life purpose. So... Thank you so much for joining us, Ramiro. Thank you for having me on the show. <laughs> of course. And today, all of us are going to be discussing the book, The Effective Executive by Peter Drucker. So, without further ado, let's get started. Yay. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> First question, team. In one word or sentence, give me your synopsis of the book. If you were the author, what, mo what main point do you want the reader to take away from the book? And let's not pick on Ramiro since the first question. Let's pick on Joseph. Show him how it's done. <laughs> you always pick on me. I don't know why I always go first, but I'm fine with it. Okay, I, I did read the book this time where I listened to the audiobook. And <laughs> Yay. I think one word, I'm going to go with a sentence. It's hard with one word. If I had to choose one word, that word would be prioritize. And just that was the thing that really stuck with me was like choosing your priorities, what you do. So that you're not just like running around with a chicken with your head cut yep. off doing everything. Stop wasting time. Exactly. And if I had to do a sentence, that sentence would be, if you want to be an executive executive, if you want to be a, an effective executive, you have to be basically a great leader of yourself, a great leader of your own time, a great leader of um, the decisions that you make and, and everything that you do. Um, so that, that's kind of what the book is about, is like teaching you how to be a great executive by leading yourself first and making great decisions, prioritizing, and managing your time so it doesn't slip away from you. Mm -hmm. Was that a sentence? Um, that was a huge sentence. Right. Man, you just took More all like the questions paragraph. into one big package. <laughs> I think they call that a paragraph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Essay, an essay, a thesis. Exactly. <laughs> Ramiro, do you care to follow that? Yeah, uh, number two, or <laughs> continue on the same question? Uh, same question. Yeah. Uh, I would definitely go with what Justin was saying, start wasting time, come up with a plan of action, and execute and then evaluate and assess the work um yeah just be mindful of your time be intentional stop wasting time thinking that you're being effective but having to have the you know the responsibility and accountability of yourself and focusing on what you have power over, what you have control over instead of things that you don't have control over or look at don't look at the robot look for uh don't look at the problem look for the solutions and come mm -hmm. up with a solution and get feedback very and, true. And work on it and, and stick with it and follow through. <laughs> Don't make excuses. Just do it. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Awesome. Sean? There he is. This is by far the Gen X credo right here. This is for latchkey kids out there. This is, the, this is old school shit. I mean, take care of your own stuff before you worry about anything else. I mean, mm -hmm. everybody's an executive. That's... That's the long and the short of it. Mm -hmm. Take care of yours and then help the person above you take care of theirs and you will live a happy, long, fruitful life. Clean your room, change the world. <laughs> like it. Great cool. Gen X book. Yeah. Um, I think the book was originally published in 1966, so... It's a little... Actually, that's when the boomers were coming into their own. <laughs> there you go. But they were having, they were having Xers, which, had the, you know, which was the greatest generation that no one ever talks about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was born in the wrong generation. I, I have to agree with that one. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for your synopsis, uh, Sean. But my turn now. Um, in the book, he actually does mention, he says... It's not about what people at the top should or shouldn't do. So it's dressed to everyone. So as Sean was saying, it's not just the executives that they're talking about, but 
everyone is considered an executive. Anybody who's responsible, whether it's a knowledge worker, anyone who's responsible for actions and decisions, um, they're all meant to contribute to the performance capacity for the organization. So it's kind of also like that old school talk, like nobody's really an individual. We're all like working together to better the company. <laughs> no, no, no. That's a millennial thing. That's not a Gen X thing. We're, we're, the, you're Disney Channel. Like we're all going to work together and everybody's going to be happy. No. Was it Leave it to Beaver? Oh, that, was, that was the boomers. No, it's MTV, I guess. MTV. The, Gen X is MTV. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's what he was saying, though. But at the same time, you're working together, but you're working separately, from what I understood from the book. You know? Okay. So, from, like, the knowledge worker, like, he was saying, yes, technically, like, employee, like, knowledge workers, like, so if you have a specialized skill, you're going to have bosses of that, but technically, you can't really tell them how to do their job because you don't have the expertise that they have. Yep. So, True story. a little bit like that. But at the same time, Everybody should be doing their own individual part to better the organization as a whole. That's what I mean. I agree with that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, awesome. Question number two. Tell us what you liked best about the book and what you disliked about the book. And I won't be picky this time. Who wants to go first? <laughs> I'll go. Oh. I'll go. <laughs> go ahead, Justin. You go ahead. Oh, okay. What I like best about the book, it's almost a classic because the ideas that in this book led to a lot of ideas that you have in a lot of other books which is true like if you're gonna lead I'm not, i wouldn't say it's a classic it's not a classic it's almost a classic but a lot of the ideas in this book like prioritizing your time doing the most important thing first um just being very discerning with your time and what you're doing a lot of those ideas we've seen in a lot of books about nowadays and we it's necessary nowadays what I don't like about the book is it's kind of outdated. I don't think even knowledge work, like everyone has all the knowledge they need at their fingertips. Now what we need, I think, is people to take action on stuff. The courage to take action. Yeah, the courage to take action. So I think the world has changed since back in, was it, was it really 1966? When it was first published, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, since back then, the world has just changed so much. And knowledge work is, work is so important. You got to prioritize and all that. But I think it's been taken to another level now just with access to everything at our fingertips and now what's stopping people is just they, they don't take action on things i agree and it's also very uh kind of dry you need a lot of syrup yeah to read through the book because it's very dry and, and it's very honest what well, i mean with dry i'm not saying that it hasn't helped a lot of, like i mean you got to read like a textbook in some ways because there's so much detail jam-packed in there but i would say if you can just read through a couple of times and catch your things in there it took me a while. I had to read it twice, almost three times, because there was so much <laughs> content in there. So, it, word of, to the wise, if you're going to plan on reading this book, read it. And the tone is kind of outdated, too, like you were saying. It's kind of dry. So, yeah. the book is go overall, but it has a lot of good examples. But I would say, you can't just fly through it and like, oh, this is fun to read and educational. You got to kind of take it, <laughs> soak it in, let, let it let it come in, let, let it register. It needs to be converted to a musical like Hamilton, is what I'm hearing. <laughs> Not throwing away my shot. <laughs> 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 I agree with that. A lot of parts were like, and I was listening to it, and it was still like, "What is he saying?" And I had to like rewind. <laughs> 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 yeah. So I agree with yeah. that. Okay. So, um, what did you dislike about it, or like it, Joseph? What did I like about it? Just a lot of the ideas are just—they seem like common sense, but a lot of people still don't do them like hiring for strength rather than hiring for not someone who's not weak. A lot of times people will focus, like I know people who hire people and they'll focus on like what the limitations are. And it's kind of like you're hiring the wrong people. You should be hiring for someone who's going to do the job that you want them to do. Um, I've seen that many times. Just managing your time, like we all struggle with managing our time, I believe. I know I do. And it's true, like if you don't look at where your time goes, it starts to slip away from you. And you'd notice like, oh, I was just chatting with my brother or my friend for like an hour. And I really didn't get much work done. Like if you really pay attention to what you're doing at work, a lot of people aren't getting a ton of work done, the amount they could be. Because they're really just like, maybe oh, I'm going to go make a cup of coffee. I know I do this. I'm going to go make a cup of coffee. I'm going to go to the bathroom or let me go talk to this guy. Yeah, go to the bathroom. Go to, I'm going to go talk to my brother. Yeah, I'm going to go to the vending machine. You get my and then I'll get some work done. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you got you to gotta really pay attention to your time where it starts to slip away. 
Mm -hmm. So it's great tips. It's great tips that are relevant still today, but it just could be, it's a little bit outdated. That's what I don't like about it. Yeah. And also like with that said, like, I think you have to understand like uh, avoiding the clutter. Like I think we got so much clutter and we try to multitask mm -hmm. and sometimes everything calling, trying to solve these problems and trying to get, you gotta be all in. You can't just have one foot out, one foot in, listen to music. I mean, some people can, but honestly, mm -hmm. I feel like you have, way more power to get things done and, and concentration and effectiveness since that's the bane of the book but to really get things done and, and i think that lie we tell us hey i'm doing good doing good but don't lie to yourself man be truthful like you know you're not effective you know you're not 100 <laughs> percent. you know you're at 110 percent. you know you haven't given your all like don't don't yeah. don't don't kid yourself like don't 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 lie to yourself you know and people hey man did you get this oh i forgot this and have a checklist. I mean, for goodness sake, write this stuff down. Like, come up with a plan so you don't lose track of stuff. I mean, just that here working, I'm like making all these mistakes. Just sit down, regroup, write this stuff down. It's ain't rocket surgery, man. Just, just do it. <laughs> it's not rocket. <laughs> and or, or I have, and also I think this is a side note, but having the attitude to want to do it, have the courage, be, be to go to like be, be pumped, be, be motivated, get enthusiastic about it. Because I guarantee your attitude term is a huge oh there's so much work oh this is bs yeah, this is bull like you got plenty of resources at your fingertips take advantage of it the attitude makes a huge difference i know it's corny i know it's cheesy but it makes a huge difference mm -hmm. true so ramiro what would you say that you didn't like about the book uh like i, like I said before i think it was a little dry for me there's a lot of stuff i couldn't just read it pick it up it, it, like you said it's outdated um Another thing I had a hard time understanding was like you were talking about how what was he talking about? He's talking about general, uh, uh, civil war generals. Then he's talking about World War II generals. Then he's talking about CEOs. And I mean, th there's some good like pieces there to kind of piece together. But I like you talking about how like if you focus on a hundred things, trying to get them done, it's impossible. But if you focus on one thing and do it right. Do it right effectively. Do it. Do it. The one thing it makes a big difference. And everything else it falls into place. Uh, that's the only thing I would say that it's kind of dry. Like, like I said, like um, um, when I when I read it, it, it was it was interesting enough to know that okay, I had to be able to just get a. I can't multitask while working and <laughs> do audiobooks. <laughs> it's like it's like we're full circle. Like I can't be effective at my job and better not be effective on this show. You know, <laughs> everything full circle. So I'll say it was overall just dry. The okay. tone was very outdated. I agree. Uh, Sean, what about you? What did you like and dislike? Uh, like my friend and colleague, Joseph Warren, I can appreciate a classic. Now, mind you, you're going to have to dig for some of it, but there's some timeless stuff here. There is some take care of your own business, and if you take care of it, everything else is going to take care of itself. And one of the other concepts that I really like in this thing is I don't have to be the smartest person in the room. I have to put smart people around me. This is my credo. This is how I live. I have a gift of getting people to do certain things in a certain way. I'm a project manager, and I love what I do. If I'm the smartest guy in the room, we're all in trouble. <laughs> but I own it, and I know it. And owning it and knowing it and having that self-discipline to say, you know what? I don't have to be Sheldon Cooper you know, I can be, I can be just the guy who sits back and says, yes, please go do the work, kick ass, take names, let me take things out of your way. But you were going to have to dig for it. It, was, it wasn't, there wasn't a <laughs> beat to it. I mean, you know, and I get it. You, you kids, y'all y'all need it up and coming with lights and but Where's you're going to have to slow down every Where's once the, in a while. The system <laughs> is have down. To, be with it and just do one thing at a time. This multitasking thing, we've read it from the new kids on the block and now the classics. There's no such thing as multitasking. You do one thing and you do it well. And then you know what? Do you do number two on your list? No. You reprioritize the whole list and then you do the most important thing again. Yeah. That's success. What I didn't like, you had to dig for that. I mean, you had to bring your shovel. I mean, the book is <laughs> it's very deep. fifty something years old. I mean, yeah. Are there any concepts, Sean, that you didn't like specifically? Some of it was dated, but you know what? Peter Drucker is—he was way ahead of his time. 
he was living very much, he went from, you know, that, that whole top down mentality. And he really challenged people at the time to be, forget the top down. You take it from the bottom up. You take it from wherever you are. He really invented this, this concept of the information worker. It's something we take for granted because a lot of companies have information workers and we're all information workers to an extent. If you don't have a repetitive job, you're considered an information worker and you're hard to replace. We can't do it with robots. We can't do it with these other things. So the one thing that this country does very well is we innovate. And if we innovate processes and become more efficient and figure out better ways to do it, we're going to be kick-ass for a very long time. So it, it gives me hope. But at the end of the day, it is dating. I mean, things are moving on. But there's a lot of good stuff here. Don't don't just uh, kick sand over it before you uh, – Joseph, don't, don't, don't just <laughs> – don't move on, man. There's a lot. I agree. Awesome. Everything, if everything's important, nothing's important. Was that in this book? Well, I mean, I think he said that in so many words. I don't think he used those particular words, but that's that's a powerful thing nowadays. I mean, people always are just like all over the place. And mm -hmm. another great idea in this book is like, should I be doing this at all? That's a great idea that is still relevant nowadays. Like a lot of times we'll be doing something. It's like, is this really even helping anything? Or am I just wasting it's, it? He didn't say this exactly, either, but yeah. my mindset is results oriented. If you are results oriented and you're producing, whether that takes you 10 hours a week or 40, you know, we went back to that whole, what was it? The, what was the law we talked about? Uh, that, that you're, you're going to fill the time with whatever the task is at hand. Parkinson's law. Yeah. Parkinson's law. And, and Parkinson's law. Right. So, you know what? If you can kick ass in 10 hours and that's what you were hired to do, then so be it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very true. I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised that you love this book so much as you're expressing, Sean. <laughs> it was a textbook. <laughs> I thought you were going to talk a lot of shit, honestly. <laughs> but, okay. Did well, I surprise you? Yes, you did. Um, well, okay, so I... I liked the book. I think there were a lot of good concepts. I think a lot of stuff, like Joseph said, was a little bit common sense. But some things, even though they're common sense, still need to be reiterated because I feel like a lot of people, they're like, yeah, obviously I'm doing that, but you don't really know. Like, for example, with the time issues, a lot of executives say, like, I do a third of consultant work. I do a third of my own admin stuff, and I do a third of, like, whatever. So, but then when they actually track it, they're like, oh, I don't do any of that, literally. Like, <laughs> So they're going to get coffee. Yeah. They're going to talk to their brother. <laughs> exactly. So just becoming aware. Um, so one of the things that I liked is that they say, if you can't manage yourself, you can't possibly expect to manage others. You know, you have to lead by example. So same thing. Like if you don't even know where your own time is going, how can you dictate what other people's yeah, time that's, that's going? Key. Um, and another thing was, how we, they say like no executive have, has ever been born it has to be learned it's not natural you don't just wake up day, one day and be like i'm a leader like yeah, yeah it's a discipline it's something you have to learn and, and it's not a subject it's, it's, it's a something you have to learn and you have to earn it and it takes with time and i think also as you evolve as a professional it comes things that start to become more and more um some things become easier but some things become harder because i guess you get more on your plate and some people have too much pride to actually delegate tasks and assignments it's just they want to do it all and then they can do it all and i remember my last job i was thinking bro like you guys too much pride man just just delegate and i guess he's afraid that he's gonna look bad because someone's gonna fail but i feel like good leadership is people that who pass not only pass the torch but light the torch you know you want to be in a place where you train someone and do it well that you can leave and be absent they can make all the decisions on your on your behalf so i don't know some people argue with that and want to say, you know, or get all the credit and glory, but at the same time, we're a team. I play my position, you play your position, man. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I've noticed that people don't, don't want to delegate or assign ass assignments to people. And it's like, you, you're holding the shit. Like, you get more done if you had more people to know how to do it. So, mm -hmm. Well, on that fun. note, yeah, on that note, he does say that in the book, that's one of the things that needs to be done effectively is delegation by executives. So, um, 
but he says, let's clarify this for a minute. Like if you're telling someone else to do your work, your actual job that you got hired for, that is wrong. You shouldn't be delegating that. Mm -hmm. What you need to be delegating is things like if you have an enormous amount of work, things that don't need to be done by executives. So for example, um, first draft of whatever documents, the executives don't need to make that first draft. Somebody else you can delegate that to to make a first draft. And then the executives can go in and check and, you know, so you're not wasting their time, essentially. And I feel like that just means that they should just all get, like, really good assistance. <laughs> but, um, but, like, you talked about, too, like, uh, Drucker was, like, very mi- minimal the way he approached things. Like, I, he didn't have, like, so much, I would say, an assistant, have all these other people. I think people have too many resources at their fingertips, but they, they just, like, don't even use them. And I feel like mm-hmm. simple is always better. Yeah. The, the more you can downsize, we say the internal weight affects the external stuff outside of you. And if you have too much weight inside of your, you know, inner reality and you got other things moving more parts, it's hard to keep up. It's like juggling. You're just trying to keep up with like basically juggling a unicycle. And it's like, if it's not working, get rid of it. Like throw it away. Like stop trying to think, oh, we need it. We need it. But when was the last time you used that? Three months, two months, you guys haven't used it. Get rid of it, man. It's holding you guys up. And the upkeep behind it, all that right there, it, it, it has to go back to downsizing, and downgrading and trimming the fat. Yep. And I think they'll be- I like this guy. <laughs> the system can help do that. But yeah, that's another thing he mentions. You know, it's like what we've learned also in other books is like, you don't have to be this massive organization. You shouldn't be hiring more people just because you can. You need to figure out what exactly you need, what kind of jobs you need in the organization and only hire those positions. So. Keep it simple, stupid. Mm -hmm. Factor. So another thing that I like is how he says we need to take responsibility for communicating, which is, I think, so important. This is another one of those common sense things but that I see all the time. It's not you know, relayed. So when I, whether it's action plans or any information that needs to be understood, you need to tell everyone, colleagues, subcommittees, peers, superiors, everybody, because the whole organization needs to understand what's going on. This is also something we've learned years ago in principles like you have to be super transparent with your team and your staff otherwise you're also going to have that lack of trust within the organization and people need to listen and shut the hell up you li- <laughs> you 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 learn more by listening than you do talking and it's amazing how some leaders love to talk 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 talk, 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 talk. So just be quiet man like i guarantee you you ask people for other people they're going to give you what you need to learn what you need to know man like stop just trying to eat the limelight and trying to always talk i had the last word like this and it's like it's just a bunch of bs just just spewing out of there like dude how effective was just to hear you talk and and pretty much i don't know just i mean that's just it's amazing how people do that and it's like this focus on getting feedback you know and have humility you're like you know what i don't know what i'm doing just accept it <laughs> and then yeah. you be oh okay this guy doesn't know what he's doing, but he's trying. At least he's trying. So you know what? I'm going to be sympathetic with him. I mean, you know what? I, I'm going to put in more hours for this guy. I'm going to be there for this guy. As opposed to just like, no, or not just guy, but her. I mean, sometimes people, you know how to do something? They let the, ask the, 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 the inferior, not inferior, but unless your subordinates help them help you out. I don't know, dude. It's amazing so much egotistical maniacs out there. Just, just shut the hell up, man. <laughs> Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Hey, thank you. Right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> At the same time, though, that's another thing that they say in the book is that when you need to make effective decisions in a way is like the first rule in decision making is do not make decisions unless there is a disagreement. And we have heard this from other books as well, but it needs to be organized disagreements. We can't have one person at the top and everybody else following blindly. You know, we have to have people disagreeing, but then they need to explain why they disagree. And then from there they can come up with a consensus. And if not, you know, if the first uh, or whatever they decide on, if that doesn't work, you can always go to plan B, try something else. But still, you don't want one person just doing everything without opposition because then that kind of leads to like a dictatorship or somebody just Tyranny, you know, yeah, doing yeah. their own agenda, you know, without the, you know, they could be not trying to do the benefit of the whole company. So. Uh, I like the fact of having people around that are going to disagree with you. That that was a cool concept, too. Mm-hmm. And that's normal. That's healthy. And then this is like all that, too, with, uh, with also the organization, but also relationships. Like, if you're not communicating adequately with your partner, you have some serious problems. 
They can't read your mind. <laughs> Very true, man. <laughs> okay, so something that I disliked about the book is that, okay, he goes on to this example of somebody throwing a temper tantrum. And he says, effective executives know that their subordinates are paid to perform um, and not to, sub not to please their superiors. So it doesn't matter how many tantrums a prima donna throws as long as she brings in the customers. And I was awesome. like, oh, hell no. <laughs> nah, this is old school. <laughs> this is the way the world works. No, no, come on. This is, this is the way the world works. You ride that horse. Maybe worked back in the day. This is not working. No, 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 no. Come on. I'm offended. Come on. Oh, my God. Oh Depending on the organization. This is the exact opposite of what we learned in the five dysfunctions of a team. Uh, it is no, I know. That. But this predates that. I mean, this is, you, you, you don't cut your performers at the knees. You don't do it. So you're giving him a hall pass? I, I, I'm not giving him a hall pass. I'm just saying you 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 have to take it on head on though. I think it depends on the on the on the context of the location. Like I think some places, depending on how it is, you can pull that off and get away with it. But then some areas, it makes you look off unprofessional, childish, immature, and petty, depending on the situation or your location. And then like I guess operas are so informal. I mean, who who actually is really keeping track of that i mean it's just so a bunch of egos and people like performance and it's so much drama in drama but going back to like on a professional setting i guess you got to kind of be careful because then there's also leadership capital that you can lose too like people lose respect for you it looks it ugly. Is. You look like a, like you look like a child like that's not classy for professional so you got to be careful depending on where you are you can pull it off but in some areas you got to be mindful of like if it's gonna hurt you in the end because remember you gotta put a long game and then you blow up like that. People will remember all of the. They'll forget all the great things you did. They focus on the bad things you did. So, it's something. So, so I and, and and maybe this is just my industry, and this could be. But I've been over twenty years in IT. I have worked with a lot of people you do not want talking to other humans, but they're brilliant and they do their job very well. But you have that's part of the, the understanding what your role is, play into their strength, which is I think where the really the argument was going. Help people play to their strengths and not to their weaknesses. Mm -hmm. I work with some brilliant people that cannot communicate for shit. So <laughs> you don't want them to do it, so you take that role for them. A lot of my career, I have really invested in communicating between tribes. I'll call them tribes, whether it's a business and an IT person or you know this solution, this solution, being that kind of translator. I could be a better listener, but I, I don't know that I discount the prima donna thing because I've worked with quite a few of them and sometimes you just have to tell them they're pretty and that you love them <laughs> but not to talk to anybody ever. it depends on context like you wouldn't want a prima donna leader because then you're going to have a team of prima donnas <laughs> hell no you, could put no, you want charismatic leaders you want, yeah. you want the, the Bill Clintons of the world but I you also the ones that, that talk the talk though who, who talk charisma but who actually put it into action because people don't say all they want to say but they don't actually back it up it's like bro like you not, like you say you have to have a good leader to have good you know support of employees yeah so yeah but you're right though sean but also they also say that there is no specific effective executive or leader blueprint of what their mm -hmm. personality should be they can be dull people they can be charismatic people they can be any extroverted, extroverted yeah introverted yeah introverted. exactly so <laughs> that doesn't necessarily make them great leaders, but I don't know. I, I still disagree with that, but that could be more of like nowadays or it could depend on the industry or like you said, Sean, if they're just going to lock them in the closet doing IT and coding all day and just don't talk to any customers or clients or whatever, and that's how the company culture works and they're okay with it, then fine. But but, but that's the thing I learned too, my industry too, the engineering, you'd be surprised. Engineering is full of like, nerdy people man like they don't want to talk to nobody like they say they just want to be in the cubicle in the office all day long and be left alone and i feel like that's not as effective if you communicate what's going on and also but they're happy they're happy <laughs> they're happy way. but the they? they can also be yes. shafted because they're not out there networking and talking to people communicating and that's where they don't get their promotions. That way, they don't exude ex leadership disabilities. It, it, it can end up hurting you in the end because you did not pursue. It can, but 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 as yeah. a leader or as an executive, it it maybe that's 
obviously not their strength. If it's your strength, then promote them. Push yeah. them out there. Make them look good. Don't let them talk. Don't let them talk. <laughs> well, you don't take some leadership. You learn how to talk. You go to workshops. You learn. <laughs> No, I guess let's agree to disagree on that. Topic. Training, you need some training. <laughs> fight it, fight it out. Yeah, <laughs> you need some training. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, lastly, team, last question of the evening: What is something that you learned from the book that you didn't know before? And give me an example of how you're going to apply what you've learned in your real life. Yeah. Uh, what are you going to do Monday differently? Don't come to me yeah. and tell me yeah, you had a great, amazing meeting and it was very constructive meeting we were able to communicate and talk about address all the problems don't come to me and how good it was what are you going to do differently monday come monday morning and that you're going to have more an effective more productive day and to get things done and not just in that little area but help other people get their job done too as faster and more effectively that, that's that's what i got out of it mm -hmm. so what are you going to do then on monday romero uh that's not your business that's for you to find out <laughs> That's the point of the We're question. Edgy at night. It gets, it gets I don't tell my secrets, man. Oh, my goodness. That's the point of the question. Here, okay. So, like, for me, what I'm going to do is I've already said, like, for my job, I have to check my time every day, like, for my work. So, I've already been doing that. And so, it's kind of make me more productive-ish. Just kidding. Just kidding. Anyways. Ish. 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 I'm kidding. I'm very productive. People watching. Are you? <laughs> You're kind of self-proclaimed procrastinator. Uh -huh. Are you? I am, but I get stuff done if it needs to get done. Anyways, that's <laughs> the point. It was <laughs> besides the point. The point is, um, is that I'm gonna start finding out where my time actually goes in my personal life, not the eight to five, but or nine to six or whatever but what do i do on the other rest of my time especially now ramira i don't know if you know i got i know yeah you saw i got um like a puppy and a puppy kitten. wrangler the cat right Which the book. cat yeah, and the kitten, puppy yeah. and a cat yeah, it's people. not the cat you're a puppy wrangler now it's a pu yeah the cat's chill she's fine it's just the puppy that's crazy oh, um squirrel, so squirrel 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 Squirrel, squirrel. Literally. Literally. He's so ADD. It's crazy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start recording my time that I do and figure <clears throat> out like how much time am I spending on a puppy and is there a way that I can manage it and consolidate it? Or and maybe you can give it a more productive. No. Snip, snip, snip. You got to let it go, man. No. Then wait. Then wait, man. Oh. Hold you back from achieving your goals. That's a full time wow. job, man. I'm just trying to help you out, Julie. Yeah. I'm just trying to help you out. Kick that COVID <laughs> puppy to the curb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or get a no. baby guy. I don't know. No, he's a baby angel. He's so sweet and he's really smart. He's high um, maintenance, huh? He's high maintenance, but he's smart and he's What's already learning. Scotty. 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 Scotty boy. So he's going to be trained. He's just a little pup right now, but he will be a great dog when he gets older. Two years from now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> We'll see. Time will tell. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. That's my challenge to myself. So, who's next? Joseph? On the hot seat again? Yes. You stole my idea, Julie. That's, I think that's the most powerful idea in the book is to track your time. <laughs> so, that's what I was going to say. But on top of doing that, because I'm an overachiever, I'll say, I'm going to ask myself, do I even need to do this? I'm just going to keep asking myself that. Do I really need to be doing this as I'm making coffee and talking to my brother and my friends? Um, this is something I really need to be doing and try to try to eliminate and not be doing as much so I can have mm -hmm. more. So you're going to record it, manage it, and consolidate it all in a couple weeks? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I'm just going to ask myself in my head, is this really, oh, okay. is this really necessary for me okay. to be doing? So it's a part of your recording process, isn't it? Yeah. Who am I going to make smile <laughs> and do I need to be doing this? Who am I going to make smile and who am I going to make cry? <laughs> <laughs> I miss that. I miss that train and the plane with that one. Sorry, a uh, little inside joke. It was one of his deals he was going to do before. Who am I going to make smile? Right? Who am I going to make? Uh, no, well, it was bigger than that. It wasn't smile. That was mine. No, who's who's your, life gonna save whose you? life are you going to save? Oh my God. <laughs> but it's an affirmation. It's not really like you have to say something. <laughs> whose life am I going to save? Do I need to be doing this? <laughs> <laughs> 
I know CPR. Mm-hmm. Okay, Sean, you're on the hot seat now. What are you going to do? Good God. I mean, I, you know, I, I need to, I think my wife's in the room with me. So if she snickers, that's who it is. Um, you know, I, I need to just, I need to go to that whole, here's what I'm going to do. Here's the most important thing. Finish that one thing and then reevaluate and come up with the next important thing. My to-do list was too long. I'm, I'm trying to do way too many things and I'm driving myself crazy in the process. So I really keep telling myself I need to go down to just trying to do one task and I am not good at it. And, and it's not, it's not even a matter of delegating more. It's about, you know, disengaging in some of these things, you know, with Toastmasters and the book club and the HOA being on a board and doing my job and, I mean, you know, I'm doing things several nights a week, and it's just I, I need to I need to do probably less. Mm-hmm. I need to stop and smell the roses more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I'm gonna have to go with you said, Sean. I think for me, since I didn't say what mine was, surprise. But since everybody's opening up like a double A meeting, I'm gonna be is uh, <laughs> basically I would have to be be present, man. I feel like I'm always living in the past and living in the future, but not living in the present. And taking my time and slow down is not that crazy. It's it, it not. It, it's not that crucial right now. You know. Okay, you gotta get your job done, but I'm still alive. I'm still breathing here. You know. Mm-hmm. T- taking one day at a time, one hour at a time, and just take it as it is. You know. Oh, I'm gonna take a break. I need to get something to eat, and then get take care of that. But then I guess for me, we we'll have to be prepare everything in, in advance. Like have everything pre cooked pre-cut ready to go everything needs to be intentional with my time i feel like i'm just shooting from the hip and there's no target there's no no range and i feel like i need to just do that do like a four points of of, of uh, action execution and everything plan of action he said that good job good job we're proud of you for opening up thank you ramiro we appreciate that oh and i highly suggest get a journal it changes Ooh. lives too it's a cool journal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any last comments, likes, dislikes, hot takes, anything that we want to add before we end today? What does that Just, mean? If someone... Don't give up your don't give up your dog. Your dog's always gonna be loyal. Your dog's gonna be loyal to the end. We're gonna we're gonna sit here and, and play, you know mess with you. Your dog will never do that. Your dog will always be happy to see you. Yeah. Gaudy. My dog loves me. He's not going anywhere. (laughs) Okay, well then, thank you so much, everybody, for watching our Hustle and Know Entrepreneurial Experience. Thank you, Ramiro, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. appreciate that. Thank Thank you, you, Peter Drucker. You can find more about him and the book in the description. And thank you so much, and we will see you next week, guys. you can't take my... Oh, I can't say that. That's that's already you. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Don't forget, guys, hustle beats talent when talent doesn't hustle. Bye. See you later.